Today guys, we've got a real interesting topic. We're gonna to be covering topical finasteride. Some of you may have heard of it, but it is generally not a widely known or discussed topic. So today, in this video, we're going to explain the idea behind topical finasteride and review the relevant research, highlighting the pros and cons. And also guys, if you're interested in trying it out for your own hair loss, we're actually going to give you some tips on how to go about making it. Make sure to stay tuned. Hey guys, Leon here from hairgod.com, where people who are worried about their hair loss go to regrow their hair. Now, if you're watching this video on topical finasteride because you're worried about your own hair loss, then what you can do is click the link in the description and you can take the Hair Guard Hair Loss Quiz. You'll answer a few short and simple questions about yourself and your hair loss, then you'll receive free, personalized, expert advice on how to regrow healthy hair. Now, for the past three decades or so, the only FDA-approved medications for male pattern baldness have been topical minoxidil and oral finasteride. So you see, when the FDA approves a new drug, it doesn't just approve the chemical compound per se. It also actually approves a specific route of administration, be it oral, topical, or whatever. Now, it also approves a specific dosage. So for male pattern baldness, finasteride is approved, manufactured, and sold for oral use only in the form of the one milligram pill to be taken once daily. Now, the advantages of an oral over a topical hair loss treatment are pretty obvious. Rather than messing around with your hair and having to wait for it to dry, you just pop a pill and you're done. End of story. So in terms of user friendliness, finasteride is clearly superior to minoxidil. Regardless of whether you compare it to minoxidil's original liquid version or the more recent mousse. But the thing is, is the mega disadvantage of finasteride also boils down to it being a pill. The pill is dissolved in the stomach and absorbed into the bloodstream. It then makes its way all the way throughout the body and reaches every single tissue. But you're really only interested in getting it to the hair follicles. It's this systemic absorption that is partly responsible for the nasty side effects, which include impotence, loss of libido, and gynecomastia. So, what if you could make a topical version of finasteride? One that inhibits DHT on the scalp while being minimally absorbed in the bloodstream. You could, theoretically, get most of the benefits while avoiding many of the side effects. Luckily for us, there are, at this point, some studies on this. The two main questions that these studies have asked are A. Is topical finasteride absorbed into the bloodstream less than the pill form? And B. Is it as effective? So let's start off by looking at the first question, which was the subject of a 2014 study out of Italy. That study compared blood finasteride levels in men who were receiving either topical 0.25% liquid solution of finasteride or the standard one milligrams daily pill. Both groups were treated for seven days. And then blood concentrations of finasteride were indeed found to be substantially lower in the topical group. On average, the topical finasteride group had a maximum blood plasma concentration of 0.46 nanograms per milliliters compared to 6.86 for the oral treatment group. That's roughly a 15-fold difference. Interestingly, this study also gave some indirect data with regards to the second question that we posed regarding the efficacy of topical finasteride. While the researchers didn't take hair counts, they did measure the reduction in blood plasma DHT levels in the two groups. And after one week of treatment, the differences between the two groups were negligible. The topical treatment resulted in blood DHT reductions ranging from 68 to 75%, while the reductions from the oval group range from 62 to 72%. A follow-up study by the same group of researchers used scalp biopsies to measure the solution's effect on scalp DHT. The men in this study were split into three groups and received either the standard oral dosage of finasteride, the topical finasteride once daily, or the topical finasteride twice daily. The results suggested that after one week of treatment, twice daily application of the solution resulted in approximately the same scalp and blood serum DHT reductions as the one milligram oral tablet. Surprisingly, the men in the study who received the once daily topical finasteride showed larger scalp DHT decreases compared to either the twice daily topical group or the oral group. Guys, what do you think of this? Does it make sense or does it just look too good to be true? Perhaps suggesting some error in the methodology. Let us know what you think in the comment section. Now, these studies used indirect measures of efficacy, namely scalp and serum DHT levels. The published research on topical finasteride is scarce. And to the best of our knowledge, there is only one published study that directly compared hair regrowth in men receiving the standard oral version to 
the topical version of finasteride. The study came out of Iran and was published in 2009 in an obscure Indian journal. The design was double blind and randomized. 45 men with androgenetic alopecia were randomly assigned to one of two treatment groups. The men in the first received topical gel finasteride and placebo pills, whilst those in the other groups took real finasteride tablets with a gel solution that contained no finasteride. So basically, though they had no way of knowing what treatment that they had been assigned to, the men in that study were either receiving finasteride orally or topically. Treatment in both groups lasted for six months and the parameters measured were the size of the bold area, total hair count and terminal hair count. Now, both groups did show significant improvements in hair count after six months, and the differences between the two groups were actually not that significant. The researchers concluded that the oral and topical versions of finasteride were actually equally effective treatments. In summary, given the evidence at hand, topical finasteride is probably not inferior in efficacy compared to the approved oral route. At the same time, given the lower systemic absorption, it might also be safer. But as we said, the data is very limited. So for patients who are concerned about the side effects but are determined to take finasteride, well, the topical route is definitely a solution that is worth exploring. Now, since you'll be making the effort to apply finasteride topically, the obvious liquid to be mixing it with is minoxidil. And indeed, finasteride reinforced minoxidil appears to be the most common way users go about it. Minoxidil and finasteride have different modes of action. Finasteride inhibits the synthesis of DHT, while minoxidil is a growth agonist with an unclear mode of action. But what is almost certain at this point is that minoxidil does not work through an androgen related pathway. That means that combining the two medications could lead to a so called synergistic effect. This is another way of saying that the combination of both drugs in one bottle will possibly give better results than either drug used on its own. A 2012 study out of Thailand compared the efficacy of topical minoxidil versus topical minoxidil fortified with finasteride. After 24 weeks of twice daily application, a panel of three doctors who were blinded to the treatment rated the men's hair. The doctors rated the men in the combination treatment as having achieved more regrowth compared to the minoxidil only group. So how do you make it? So you can't buy topical finasteride, which means that if you're interested in trying it out, you will actually have to make your own. What you'll need is the liquid version of minoxidil, not the foam. Ideally, you would like to have finasteride in powder form, but this can be quite difficult to obtain. Scientists that have studied topical finasteride have access to the powder version of the drug, but this is only available for research purposes. It is not something that can be sold to the general public. So if you do want to try this, you will have to create your own powder finasteride by crushing up tablets. Finasteride is sold in two strengths, either 5 milligrams for those with prostate enlargement or 1 milligram for those with pattern baldness. If you can get the 5 milligram version that is sold under the brand name Proscar, you will actually end up saving a lot of money. It costs a little more than the 1 milligram Papisha tablets, but you get 5 times as much finasteride. And since finasteride's patent has expired, you can try to source generic versions of Proscar, which will retail for substantially less. However, the drug is not available over the counter, so you will need a doctor's prescription. So guys, give us your thoughts in the comment section below. Topical finasteride is a hassle to make and there are limited studies to date. It is an option that will probably only appeal to a very specific subset of men with hair loss. But guys, have you ever used it and what did you think of it? And if you've never used it, did you even know that such a thing existed? Guys, make sure to click the videos on the screen right now to learn more about hair loss.